Hi everyone, ChatGPT kicked off an AI arms race, prompting OpenAI to maintain secrecy about its operations, especially with their latest model, GPT-4. However, this secrecy was broken when architectural details about GPT-4 were leaked by an analytics firm. What does this mean for AI? Keep watching to learn more. This video has three sections, details about the leak, scale and architecture, and wait, how many GPUs? Part one, details about the leak. Earlier in July, an analytics website named Semi-Analysis posted some information about GPT-4. The information was behind a paywall, but a Twitter user, Yam Peleg, quickly took the majority of the information and summarized it on Twitter. The information was quickly taken down from most places on the internet, although a lot of the requests seem to have been filed by the original analyst or journalist rather than by OpenAI. The content of this information is probably an open secret in the industry. There are lots of engineers moving from OpenAI to Google or vice versa, leaving from one job, going to another, and obviously people talk as well. The importance of these details about GPT-4 is probably not that significant for anyone other than a big AI lab. Even academia these days doesn't really have enough resources to train a full-scale large language model across the whole internet the way that these AI labs can. Unfortunately, each leak brings us closer to a future where these ideas are present in open source or otherwise widely replicated, which of course brings us even closer to potentially dangerous AGI. Like I said, there's been an effort to take down a lot of this information. However, it's still relatively easy to find, so I'm going to tell you a bit about it in the hopes that it is enlightening and that you are not a big AI lab searching for this information. Part two, scale and architecture. First, let's talk about parameters. GPT-3 had 175 billion parameters, but GPT-4, we now know, has 1.8 trillion parameters. That's more than 10 times larger, which is amazing given the short time between when GPT-3 was released and GPT-4. These 1.8 trillion parameters, or supposedly 1.8 trillion parameters, are split across 120 layers of neural network. 120 layers is a lot. For reference, some academic literature considers a neural network to be very deep if it's more than 10 layers deep. So we're talking not just deep learning, but very deep, I suppose. 1.8 trillion parameters is a lot. You need several bytes to represent each parameter. Let's say at least two bytes if you're using half precision floating point numbers, more like four bytes if you're using regular floating point numbers. So that's three to six terabytes of data just to represent the actual numbers that are inside the matrices of the neural network. The structure of the model isn't uniform though. OpenAI is apparently using a technique called mixture of experts. These parameters are split evenly between 16 different expert models that try to specialize in a particular area. We're told that one of the models is specifically for programming or coding, and that two of the models are used at any given time, presumably the two that seem to be best suited to the problem at hand. Anyway, if you split the 1.8 trillion parameters equally, you get about 111 billion parameters in each of the 16 expert models. This idea of splitting the problem into different expert models is actually a pretty old one. I know that they were using that for satisfiability problems at least 10 years ago. The source isn't certain, but it seems like there's a possibility that OpenAI is using speculative decoding, meaning they take a smaller model that tries to approximate the really big GPT-4 and they run that speculative model first. If the speculative model seems pretty sure of its answers, then they won't even consult GPT-4, which is actually very clever because they can adjust the threshold on how certain the speculative model needs to be and that way reduce the amount of computational resources they're using because they're reducing the amount of times that the really big model has to actually be executed. And that would degrade the quality of output in the models. People saying that GPT-4 is getting worse may not be conspiracy theorists after all. This is also pretty common practice to use transfer learning to create an approximation of a much larger model. And it's common in other areas of computer science as well. For example, modern CPUs actually do speculative execution of different instructions in every program. Once they figure out that they're actually executing the correct instructions, they save those results. And if the speculation is wrong, so the code ends up going down a different branch than the CPU expected, then those results just get thrown out. There's one difference though between speculative execution on a CPU and speculative decoding of models. When you're on a CPU, there's only one right answer. There is a single sequence of instructions that was supposed to be executed. But for a model, you can't know for sure how good the approximation is without actually looking at the bigger model, which was what you were trying to avoid in the first place. So this actually does result in a degradation of performance. Part three, wait, how many GPUs? Let's talk about inference and training resources. So inference is done on GPUs with 80 gigabytes of memory. Both the A100 and the more recent H100 GPUs have 80 gigabytes of memory. And I previously said that they were probably using at most eight of these GPUs at once. And there's a good reason for that because servers can generally only hold eight GPUs inside them. And for NVIDIA GPUs, which is 95% of the market, you can actually hook up up to eight GPUs together with a technique called NVLink. And that's a special hardware connection between those GPUs that allows extremely fast 
transfer between them, but you can't go more than eight with NVLink. And if you look at machines that are available in the cloud, including Azure Cloud, which is what OpenAI is using, you can find machines that have 80 gigabyte GPUs, but you can't really find more than that. It's just really hard to generate the power necessary and you end up bottlenecking the communication between the CPUs and the GPUs because you can't really handle more than eight. But this was the surprise for me. OpenAI is using those nodes. They are using eight GPUs at once for a portion of the decoding, but they're actually running 16 copies of that in parallel. In other words, they have probably 16 machines, each of which has eight GPUs inside it for a total of 128 GPUs. Anytime you want GPT-4 to generate even a single output word. In case you're curious about operating costs in the cloud, $1 buys about 2,000 words generated by A100 GPUs, and $1 buys about 5,000 words generated by the newer H100 GPUs. And by the way, although we call them GPUs, the A100 and H100 are very specifically designed hardware that's meant for doing matrix operations and doing the operations that are needed for machine learning. They're still GPUs because they satisfy the same hardware interface and so on, but they're not purely designed for graphics. They actually contain machine learning specific hardware. In terms of training resources, so this is when OpenAI was creating the model to begin with, they apparently trained on 25,000 A100 GPUs for a period of between 90 and 100 days. This is pretty insane and getting those GPUs from the cloud would cost about $63 million. Again, this is just one training run. They may have done multiple training runs that didn't work out or that needed to be tweaked in some way, but the final training run took about $63 million worth of compute. It's worth noting that now there are H100 GPUs available and if you were to spend $22 million on only 8,000 H100 GPUs, you could get it done in 55 days. So all those numbers are smaller, right? 25,000 became 8,000, 90 to 100 days became 55 days, and your price also went from 63 million to 22 million. That just goes to show how much hardware can really accelerate the development of these models. Anyway, OpenAI actually specifically approached Microsoft and asked them to build a supercomputer for them back in 2020. This supercomputer apparently has 10,000 GPUs inside it, presumably A100 GPUs based on when it was built. So that's a custom computer, single computer with tons and tons of CPUs and tons and tons of GPUs in it. Perhaps they used it for training the GPT-4 model, although again, it's only 10,000 GPUs and they would have needed 25,000. These numbers sound really large, but remember that the very first computers were also the size of a room and cost millions of dollars. And just for fun, by comparison, a Boeing 737 plane costs about $100 million to produce or buy right now. So the whole training run didn't even cost as much as a plane. And if we think large scale, it cost about $280 billion in today's money to go to the moon. So we're pretty far from having the resources of a whole country dedicated to a task like developing artificial intelligence as we had seen in the past. Now, this is actually an example where I don't think throwing more money at the problem would help that much. It would speed up your training times a little bit. But the bottleneck is really collecting high quality data, data scientists thinking about the best way to approach the problem and the best way to structure the information. But it's very interesting to me that relatively speaking, very small amount of financial resources are having such an outsized impact on society. Finally, in conclusion, details about GPT-4's architecture were leaked and not verified, but there are a lot of details there, so it seems pretty legitimate. And those details tell us that there are 16 expert models acting in concert to produce GPT-4, that training took place on 25,000 GPUs and probably cost about $63 million, and that inference is relatively expensive. You can get between 2,000 and 5,000 tokens for $1. Given that GPT-4 currently costs only $20 per month, that tells me that they're probably losing money on the people that are heavily using GPT-4, even with a discount that they're probably getting from Microsoft on their cloud computing resources. If you found this video interesting, check out this previous one I made about why no one saw ChatGPT coming. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.